everyone. Today we're going to continue with our Joe Morello uh, Master Studies 2 series, and we're going to do the chapter on control studies. So that's a large chapter, the largest one in the book. It goes from pages 48 all the way to 64. So there's a lot to cover. I won't be playing everything for you, but I'll be touching on each individual section. So uh, this uh, study can be played several different ways, as in all of his studies. It can be played with the wrists, fingers, and this one especially can use the Muller technique. Now, if you're unfamiliar with that, you should watch my video that I've already done on the Muller technique. I'll put a link in the description to this video. That's so you know what's going on. And it's not a beginner's kind of stroke. It's, it's a difficult stroke, so you need to watch that video first. But I will do these several different ways with the wrist, uh, some fingers, and with the molar stroke. So if we go to page 48, we'll start there. Now, this section uh, varies in accents. So in other words, you're playing uh, groups of triplets, and then you're accenting the first note in the first study, then the second note in the second study, and the third note in the third study. Now, that might seem kind of simple, but actually, it's very, very difficult. You can use the same motion, but physically and mentally, it's sometimes hard to get around the starting point, uh, especially if you're using the Muller technique. So I'll show you some tricks for doing that today. Now, one of the things I do uh, when I do page 48, the first section, and this is the first section I'll work on with students in the control studies section, is I'll just do it with the wrist, and we'll do it slowly, uh, maybe about around 120, if the student already has good technique, that's where we'll start. If not, we'll start slower, maybe 100. So I'll do them at 120, and I'll just show you how to do these with the wrist. So here's the tempo, and I'm subdividing triplets. One, two, three, four. Very simple, right? That's the first one, just three notes on each, but I am accenting with the wrist. Now again, it's not a stiff wrist. I'm not doing this. I'm using the wrist for the first stroke and then letting the stick bounce some and following it with my wrist, okay? So every stroke is not played with the wrist. The first accent is, and then the wrist does the following and I try to let that stick bounce. There are uh, no fingers involved in this particular technique. Now you'll see if you play traditional, with my left hand I'm doing a slight whip stroke like this. So I'm coming up and I'm releasing my first two fingers from the stick and using my thumb to push down the stick. So again, that's called a clinch. If you watch my other videos, I'm doing that. All right. These bottom fingers are staying in place and they're regulating the stick. They're keeping the stick from going further than that. This is not the Muller technique. The Muller technique is this. That's a whip stroke. This is a wrist stroke. With a lot of thumb as well to give you that accent. If I do that stroke without the thumb, it looks like this. That's all wrist. And you can only go so fast like that. All right. And also it's a tight stroke, so everything will sound staccato. And we want it to sound not all staccato, a little bit legato. So a little bit longer notes. The other thing that stroke does, it gives you a really strong accent. When you practice these, and if you do them on a pad, I'm using an old quiet tone drum mute, as I always do. And if you do that, be careful not to play too hard on a snare drum, that would be deafening. So again, I'm not really laying into it really hard. I'm keeping a low level, I'm not going up really high. Maybe on the accents, eight to 10 inches. And the unaccented notes are really low. So I'll play through these for you uh, just two times each at 120 so you can see the motion. 
One, two, three, four. So that's just using the wrist stroke, the little bit of a whip stroke, like that. Now the next way you can do these is with the Muller technique, and this is much more difficult. But the bonus of that is you can play really, really fast like that. So when I'm teaching this and when I practice it, I'll use a heavier stick. I like to use the same thickness of stick, but just heavier. This is a pair of leopard, leopard wood sticks that I made, and these are about 75 grams, so they're pretty heavy. What this does, it teaches you to bounce easier. So the stick is heavy, so when you throw it, you'll get more bounces. So this is a good way to learn and train your body to do those bounces. And then when you switch to a lighter stick, it's actually easier to do, all right? But keep in mind, this Muller technique is a thrown technique. So you're throwing the accent, and you're getting rebound. The difficulty with this technique is getting uh, the number of strokes you need to get and to keep it even. That's the hardest thing and that's what you'll have the most problems with. So you want to put the metronome on, you know, I'll go anywhere from 130 to 160, which is extremely fast. Uh, 140, let's split the difference today. We'll do 140 and I'll just play a few of these so you can see the motion. So here's the first and second one. One, two, three, four. So you see that kind of perpetual motion, my arms are doing this. Now when we get to number three, we start doubling up. In other words, two sets of three on each hand, and that looks like this. One, two, three, four. So that's how uh, two and, um, sorry, three and four look. All right, so I'll play all these for you. Well, I'll attempt to do it. Uh, they, this can get a little bit exhausting, especially with a heavier stick. But again, I practice these kinds of things every day. You're going to have to build up to this. Don't overdo it. You can hurt yourself. All right. The idea is to always be relaxed. But I'm kind of trying to show you what's possible uh, doing these things. So we'll do each one again twice, numbers 1 to 12 at 140. 1, 2, 3, 4.
So that's the first section at 140. It's pretty quick tempo. You can go faster, you can go slower. That's kind of in the middle where I do it. But you will notice the height that I get on that stroke. The next section puts the accents on the second beat of that triplet. So these are a little more challenging, although they may seem the same because you got an accent and then, uh, you know, within the triplet, the nature of it being on the second beat makes it extremely difficult mentally and physically. So normally I'll do these uh, again two ways with the wrist. And then with the Muller technique. So those are the ways you should practice it as well. So when we do it with the wrist, we can go pretty slow. Uh, 110 is a good place to start. And we're going to do kind of a clinch a little more than before. So that kind of clinch. I'll play it for you so you can see. I'll just do the first two. One, two, three, four. So you see how my fingers are closing on the stick. My thumb's coming off. That's doing most of the work. These fingers and then the bottom fingers are trapping the stick. And there's obviously a little wrist motion involved too. And with the right hand, I'm just doing that motion. So. So. So um, let's place the whole page, well, this is a page turner, so you, you have to go to page 50. So I'll just do the first five for you in this manner so you can see exactly what's going on. So we'll do 110, and again, I'm using a heavier stick. Uh, it helps with the accents at first, it's kind of like a training stick. And then uh, we'll just do the first five two times each. One, two, three, four. You notice I also put the beep on. That beep helps me uh, make sure I stay on track with that accent on the second beat of the triplet. So you don't want to turn the timer on there. Now, if we do the Muller technique with the same thing, we can do this again a little faster. So you can easily get it, you know, pretty quick. We won't do it too fast for you today. Let's just do 130. And I'll show you this. So this is the um, uh, page. 49, same thing, 1 through 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's um, page 49, one through five. And, and you can go, uh, the next page continues, same thing. Really, it's just a continuation of the first part, same accents, uh, uh, same stickings, I should say, and the accents are in the second beat. And then you get to the third one, where the accents on the third beat. So, you know, once again, you can do this two ways, with a clinch stroke and a Muller stroke. So we'll just do the same thing. I'll demonstrate a few of these. It's pretty 
pretty common sense, pretty much common sense to do these the same way. Of course, it takes a lot of practice. So it's easy to figure out how to do them. Doing them is a whole other thing. And remember to start slow. I'm doing them a little fast today to show you what's possible. And Joe used to do them even faster than this. So it's pretty amazing uh, to watch him do these. Okay, so um, let's try these at 110. We're page 50 and we'll do, you know, maybe the first five again of these. One, two, three, four. Now again, they are called control studies, so everything needs to be controlled and with a metronome. So you must subdivide, like I'm doing. And you you saw there the clinch. It's it's not a violent action, so my whole arm isn't jumping. It's just fingers. So that's how I'm using my fingers there. I'm not using the stick, uh, my fingers, to move the stick on the first two strokes. That's more of a bounce. So. So I'm letting one wrist stroke go, letting it bounce, and then the clinch. And that's different again from the Muller where you're throwing the stick. So when you do these faster with the Muller stroke, we can do them again, same tempo, 130 or so, and you'll see the difference here. One, two, three, four. So again, that's the first five. Now the first two, you know, you're not really recovering on the same hand. So that's still a little more clinch-like. So that's the first section of these control studies. Uh, you, you put the accent on the first, the second, and then the third beat. And then you get to <laughs> the hard part. So then we're doing two accents. Now this is going to be mostly wrist. Uh, and you need to go really slow at first, especially if you're teaching and you have students, because this can get out of hand pretty quickly. Uh, it's easy on these for a student to want to really grip the stick like a club and do this to make that accent come out. Please don't let your students do that if you're a teacher, okay? You want, again, the accent to rely on the weight of the stick, and you want it to be loose. So it's bouncing up. Some people call that a free stroke, it, but it's not a full stroke. Full stroke is this. I don't do those, okay? If you want to talk it, of it in terms of a free stroke where it bounces up, I do do those, but I don't call it a free stroke. I just call it a bounce. So the stick is bouncing up. So it's in perpetual motion. So slowly, like 100, ah, let's go slower so you can see it. Let's go all the way to 90, and you'll see this. We'll just do the first two. One, two, three, four. So that's the first two, all right? And again, you want to go slow. These, these don't really do well too fast. So 
that's one way to practice it where you're just doing the two accents and then your other hand to get started that's a way that i've had students do it who have trouble so in other words just so they can get the sound in their head and then they got to do it with one hand now you'll find the first two are the hardest because you're having to switch hands quickly after that it gets a little bit easier number three all right so again these um, shouldn't go too fast and then he does the same thing on page 53 he has it on the second two beats so we'll put the metronome on so you can hear that. One, two, three, four. Now that's uh, actually a lot easier than the first one with the first two on the beat, all right? Probably because we're all used to doing that when we play jazz. All right, so normally we're not playing on the beat. We're playing off the beat on the ends. So let me play a few of these for you a little quicker. Uh, you know, 95 or so. One, two, three, four. You get the idea. Lots of wrist, like I said. No molar, no uh, fingers. This is just a great wrist exercise. But again, when we say it, not a tight wrist. Not, but this. Let that stick bounce, okay? And that goes through, and then we have uh, uh, the accents on the first and the third beat. and so forth. Again, wrists for this whole section. In other words, the section with the two accents, you want to use a lot of wrist on that. All right. Okay. And then, uh, you know what? We'll save this for another video because this next part is brutal. <laughs> and it's kind of like the stone killer. If you, uh, if you worked on Joe's first book where you're doing the fill-ins uh, with the control studies, but man, it's, uh, it's a workout. And please, I got to you know, almost beg you, don't do too much of this uh, at once. You're liable to get tendonitis if you're not used to doing it. And all of a sudden you get excited and you're going to go in there and do two hours of something like this. And you'll get up the next day and your arms, you know, your hands are going to be like this, especially if you're tight. So just do a little bit at a time and then increase your practice time, you know, s slowly. So you don't get tendonitis. And that's an issue that I've had with students in the past, they get so excited about doing these things and they want to do them all day, you know, and that's probably not too smart. It's like, it's not, you're not going to run a marathon if you've never run a mile and you try to run a marathon, it'll probably kill you. So just take it easy, go slow, relax. Gotta remember, I've been doing these things for, you know, well over 30 years. So I'm used to doing them and, and all, the, all this whole series I'm recording in one day Probably because you see I have the same clothes. I did change my pants once, <laughs> but because it gets hot down here. But I, but you know, so I'm doing this all in one day, and I'm able to do that because I've been playing a really long time. But if you start trying to do too much at once, you're gonna have some problems. I pretty much guarantee it. And that's not from playing wrong, that's just from overdoing it. So don't overdo it. Listen to your body. If you start feeling tense, if your muscles hurt, uh, if you if this muscle here that's tennis elbow there's a tendon here that hurts that can be a bad sign stop right away 
all right, because that can get chronic. I've not had it, but I have had students who play marimba get it, and also people who overdo it on the pad. And I've definitely had marching band and drum corps students get it from playing on those, you know, the drums are tuned like a table, so tight. And there's, you know, there's not a lot of give in that, so they're playing all day like that. And this tendon is the one that takes the brunt of that. So please be careful. All right, so we'll see you next time. Thanks.